Hello everyone, this is RaySpace in Kerbal Space Program with Realism Overhaul here to test out other nefarious uses of Super Heavy after I got a lot of comments in the previous video where I had put the shuttle on Super Heavy suggesting various other things to do. We'll call it the Super Heavy Applications Program, I guess. And these suggestions fell into two basic categories. One was other ways to place a shuttle on Super Heavy, including on the side using Super Heavy as the external tank, and also having the shuttle with its own tanks, but Methalox tanks, and then use the Raptor vacuum engines. So I'll tackle those in a separate video. That's one uh, category. The other category is just putting some other upper stage on Super Heavy that won't be reusable, so not Starship. Now, the problem with that is that the largest stages still aren't large enough for Super Heavy. And here we have the largest hydrogen-oxygen stage, upper stage developed. There have been pretty big lower stages, like the core stage of SLS. Maybe I should put that on. Uh, but this is the largest pure upper stage that has been developed, and that's the S2 stage from Saturn V. And the problem with this is it's not big enough. Now, I could, and I already have previously, uh, put the SLS core on top of Super Heavy. I forget which video that was, but it's been done. Uh, so I'm not going to do that again. What I'm going to do is try to find the optimal upper stage for it instead of just putting a sort of stock upper stage. Because, you know, what we have here right now is not good enough. I need to put a controller on. Um, let me put the Saturn instrument unit on there. So this whole thing with a 100 ton payload is still under 600 tons. So that's not good enough. Uh, we could probably shove some more fuel in here, but still that's half the mass of Starship. So we need two of these, but if you put two of those, we need double the engines. And so the whole thing becomes a mess. And even as it is right now, there's no way that if we keep three engines lit on Super Heavy, uh, this would get away safely because the thrust to weight ratio of the S2 stage was too, too low. It was only 0.83. You need at least a thrust to weight ratio of 1 to be safe. And so it would not turn out very well for us, especially if we put a heavier payload on top of it. Uh, so I need to double the size of this, which means basically doubling the length because if we double the width, well, I mean, we could bring back the 12 ton, uh, not 12 ton, 12 meter uh, um, carbon composite stages that they were originally going to have for the ITS of SpaceX. SpaceX was originally going to make a 12 meter rocket and then they decided not to do the composite thing. Uh, if we add a composite hydrogen oxygen tank at 12 meters, uh, that would be a little bit better. But what engines is the question because can't use, the, we need like 12 J2s or something like that. Um, you know what? Just for kicks, let's launch it, right? Uh, let's just go ahead and launch it. I mean, it's very hard for me to figure out whether this is going to have enough delta V at all right now, as you can probably see. Oh, uh, I guess we can launch from here. I was going to try for 39B, but this is okay too. All right, SAS on, throttle up, ignition, ignition, and launch. Well, there it is. Now, the light upper stage also means that Super Heavy is going to get further out than it ought to. And I'm still going to try and reserve fuel for it to come back. We are not going to entertain now the possibility of disposing of Super Heavy. It, it will always be meant to come back, even though we're not going to necessarily do that part. So I will reserve the fuel and try and stop it at a decent time. Okay, uh, separation. Uh, okay, things exploded. Um, can we go? Okay, we can go. I don't know what went on right there, but... Uh, here we have 3,000, so that's not good enough, really. I'll have to reserve more. But as we'll see, um, we're probably not going to have enough here. Oh no, we do have enough. I underestimated. Hmm. 
Yeah, right now it's showing that we have plenty, so that's good. All right, revaluation re time. The problem is we can't make the payload too much heavier because the thrust weight ratio is going to be very bad in that case. So 150 tons. We're going to try and reserve more in Super Heavy so that I can return properly. I really do need to be getting on with the better variants though. Okay, throttle up, SAS on, ignition, ignition, and go. I'll just call it at two minutes this time. We'll see how that works out. Okay. Okay. Oh no, 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 no. All, all that stuff off. All that stuff off. Go, go, go. Okay, how much is it? Um, I need you... Okay, 3,900 might be possible. Considering a lot of that is vertical component there. You don't kill anything. Alright. And the skirt. Ah, uh, we might be a little bit too short this time. Well, we are a little bit too short this time. So 150, not likely. At least we got to see this variant up to this point, but I don't think there's any point bringing it to orbit. It's not good enough. It's just not good enough. So let's try and optimize this a bit. So as mentioned earlier, what we're looking for is a 12 meter tank. Probably not composite if we're going to use hydrogen. Composites don't really like that sort of thing. Um, they're not good at really cold temperatures. But if we keep it at 10.1 meters, it's going to get way too long. I'm just going to use isogrid structure. Well, we're going to dump it, so we don't want it too refined. Let's just say aluminum gridded tank. We don't want to spend too much on something we're going to dispose of. We'll sort of make it look like a Saturn tank. How about that? There, vaguely. All right, so I have this subconfig that's meant to be a vacuum variant of the RS25D slash E. And that gives it three ignitions. And in theory, it should have a bigger nozzle, but it's not showing that bigger nozzle because this model doesn't have that. Uh, but it has the configuration. So I think we're going to use the, the SSMEs or RS25s and because otherwise we don't have enough thrust. Now these, for some reason, don't have surface mount. Oh gosh, they didn't have a bottom node on these engines? Okay, I need a different kind. I mean, NASA's okay with disposing of the RS-25s anyway, right? Well, why, why don't we just call it Ares 5 for the heck of it? Because that would have had five RS-25s potentially. That's one way of going about it. Uh, let me retract this arm right away. We don't need that right now. And yeah, I'm not doing all the retraction stuff that I'm supposed to be doing because I'm not using the launch script. But yes, our goal here is now to get 250 tons to orbit. That doesn't look that bad. Let's see it outside. And let's take it to pad 39B since now we have RS-25s, it fits. Oh, 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 um... It's, it's all gone haywire. Uh... Between fairing and payload adapter, there's a structural failure? Gosh, can't trust the procedural fairings these days? Would it be better if I didn't use pad 39B? Okay, it does look safer here. All right. SAS on, throttle up, ignition, and launch. I think maybe there was something left on the pad over there. 
Well, it doesn't look quite as good out here as it did in the VAB. Looks a bit awkward. Well, through max Q and everything. With the heavier upper stage, it shouldn't be the case that Super Heavy gets too far out. Should be able to use basically the regular timing. Okay, but I'm still not gonna take any chances. Okay, throw up. Probably got rid of the fairings a little bit early. Alright, well, let's see how much Delta V we have. Should be capable of making orbit, so I'll proceed finally. 250 tons, let's see. But we need cheaper Hydrolox engines, nobody's gonna like dumping the RS-25s. Where's that Hydrolox Raptor? <laughs> you can't just turn a Raptor into a Hydrolox engine, that doesn't work, but... Alright, looking good for orbit with 250 tons. Plus the instrument unit, that's bonus. Okay, that's more than enough, 234 by 200. We don't have a whole lot of extra propellant left, so I'm going to guess that 250 tons is the limit. Well, the question is, what can we get to the moon? Because this isn't actually an optimal stage. We're asking quite a lot out of it. Uh, so a third stage for getting to the moon would be able to complete orbit and get us a decent payload over there. Let's see what that would look like. I don't think it's a good idea to just throw on the S2 stage, though it's tempting. Um, that, that is tempting. We'll have to make this smaller. But maybe just put J2s on it. But really, it's a shame because the RS-25s are more efficient. Maybe I'll just put one RS-25. Since we do have this relightable version. Or I could just use my SE-2040Vs, which are just 360 kilonewton, really big nozzle Hydrolox engines with 463 seconds of ISP. Maybe that would be better. At least they sort of look cheaper. <laughs> what I'm going to try to get out of this is 100 tons to the moon. And we're going to have a 12 minute burn time on this stage. And I've put the RCS. Now, of course, ion engines, if this is just going to be cargo, then, you know, ion engines plus nuclear or ion engines plus something else might be helpful too. Though this amount of payload, 100 tons, having the ion engines push it, that's going to be a lot of propellants. And those propellants aren't the easiest to come by. Well, now that's reading nine minutes for some strange reason. Um... Oh, I thought it was a 12 minute stage. Now it's saying 9 minutes. Okay, 9.5 minutes is it is then. And then we gotta make this just 6 minutes. That's still 1,412 tons. That, that might be pushing super heavy a little bit, but not horribly. Let, let's just call this Lunar Optimal. Sort of. I mean, if we can get 100 tons to the moon potentially, it seems pretty good to me. Lunar Optimal Super Heavy. Of course, there could be other things like I've just mentioned, but with Hydrolox, this is what we've got. Ignition, ignition, and launch. Past the speed of sound. Probably don't have to really worry about Super Heavy getting out too far this time. Alright, I'm gonna cut it there. Oh, the little... What might have been a hot stage ring is sort of hanging loose there. 
Sake fairings. And technically there's got to be more than 100 tons because of the Saturn instrument unit there. But we'll assume that that's built into the upper stage. Okay, the conclusion of this stage. The question is whether the next stage can complete orbit with enough to spare in order to get to the moon. All right, staging. Five of them together is pretty close to the thrust of an RS-25. We're pretty high up, I'll probably let it fall a bit. Okay, making orbit. Well, there we are. And the official tally on the Delta V remaining, 3,295. Probably with NASA margins, uh, that would be just about enough to get to the moon. Now, we haven't lined up with the moon, but I can verify with an off-plane transfer here. I didn't use any fancy tank. I didn't use the composite tank. I just used the regular aluminum tank. Isogrid. Well, we might as well go this way. All right, there it is. 3,151 meters per second. And we have that with some to spare. So probably some boil off or something like that, maybe. But yes, it can get 100 tons to the moon without any refueling or any special thing like that. But you'd have to make 12 meter hydrogen tanks, which is hard. <laughs> so, uh, and yeah. We, we know how hard it is to get stages like that, so eh, it's probably difficult in all that business. But it'd be nice to have a rocket that could get 100 tons to the moon, just like that. And in Kerbal Space Program, you can just put it together like this. So yeah, if you want to replace these with RL-10s, you're going to need 15 of them or 16 of them. So just a warning, uh, you need them large. Maybe... BE3Us would be good, uh, depending, uh, the ISP shouldn't be too bad, but BE3Us for this purpose would be good, um, two or three would do the trick. Uh, so yeah, if you have those engines, you can put together this kind of rocket and then you'll have a massive rocket. We should have been starting the burn right now if we wanted to go. But yeah, I decided to do these right away and I'll follow up with the other shuttle configurations because otherwise I'm going to totally forget about it because I'll be caught up in the middle of other things and I'll let this whole um, super heavy bonanza, the super heavy applications program slip away in my thoughts. So I'll try to get to it as soon as possible, but here we've had some exploration of Hydrolox upper stages for Super Heavy. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.